Round Rock, Texas. Starting the morning off right. Welcome everyone, Adam the Woo here. And there is something fantastic. Near this roundabout, the line is very long to get into Round Rock Donuts, home of one of the largest donuts on earth. It is true, everything is bigger in Texas. It's my second channel, daily vlog channel. It's eating their way across Texas. <laughs> the Daily Woo. The drive through line is completely insane. It is like a mishmash of vehicles stretching all the way around, all the way around the building, and then up to the window. Good thing we're going inside. Of course, you could purchase a normal sized pastry. But when in Rome, when in Rome. Oh my gosh. Open it up. Give me a peek. They have it sealed like Fort Knox. Oh, seriously. Oh my goodness. Look. We're actually doing this? It's honestly not just the novelty of the size. It tastes pretty freaking good. It's good. And I didn't even know about this place till a few people suggested it. And I figured, what the heck? Give it a try. We have failed. You failed me for the last time. Look at this. We only ate about a third of it. For health's sake, I think it's wise that we stop now though. Let's just put the top on it and end and end this experience. But Huge thumbs up from me. What about you? This is amazing. This is one of the best donuts I've ever eaten. I think it might be wise to get gas ASAP. Drink it up. She was thirsty. Drink it up. You kind of just have to guesstimate on how much fuel is being pumped. Because look at this screen. Seen better days. The Texas landscape. Moderately flat, but beautiful. And very foggy today. A little bit of fog on the horizon. The arrow is pointing down this road. In order to gain entry, you have to walk through basically a house to get inside. A wristband is required. If you're not wearing this, a Tyrannosaurus will rip your head off. I'm going in. I'm going in. Hello, fellas. Watch out, Jacob. What? You're walking inside a Megalodon jawbone. This is the Ankylosaurus, and it doesn't have anything to do with this ankles. The translation of it means fused lizard. And he would defend himself by using his tail by clubbing opponents. Well, not opponents, but predators. They seem to have found some relics in the form of footprints, and they have been surrounded in concrete. Right. Do you know who the shortest man in the Bible was? Think about it. I'm slowly thinking of everyone in the Bible. Yes, give, don't think. Da, na, the shortest na, na. man in the Bible. You give up? Yes. Nehemiah. Maya. Did you make a new friend? Yes. I'm taking him home. He's not coming in the RV. Oh, come on, man. I love him. Of course, one of the more famous dinosaurs Mr. Triceratops here. I wonder if his last name really is Triceratops. You know how certain characters like Donald's last name is Duck, mm -hmm. Mickey's is Mouse. What if there's another male mouse? Is his last name Mouse also? How come you're not Jacob Human? How come I'm not Adam Human? You know, I'm when I get home, I'm gonna go down to the courthouse and legally change my name to Jacob Human. Jacob Human. This place is definitely a lot of fun. Are you trapped? This dinosaur, right? There. I know. Yeah. Well, see you later. Best of luck. Best of luck, buddy. One of the girls that works here said, you guys have to do the scavenger hunt. So we are on number six, looking for the Allosaurus, the main predator of the Stegosaurus that's hiding in the woods. And I think he is right there, right there. And he's got a bit of a staring problem. Supposedly there is a small alligator out here somewhere. I'm not, oh, 
It's right there. And whenever there is a baby, there is a adult protecting it. Look at this, what the heck? After getting close to this thing, it's kind of scary. I hear a bird. I hear a bird out here. So, what in the name of Hitchcock would be proud? Right below us here is the hatching of a Tyrannosaurus. This is a baby one. Hope the mom's not around anywhere because if she is, you're in trouble, Jacob. You're in trouble. Hey, wait a minute. I'm not sure what's going on over here but one has been decapitated. All joking aside, it was destroyed by strong winds on April 30th, 2016. There's his head. I found his head right there. I really like that guy though. They say he'll stick his neck out for you. I don't recall seeing this particular creature in my childhood dinosaur books, but he is scary. Get me out of here. We have been birthed. We are now free Nanu, from captivity. Nanu. Are you doing Mork? Yeah. I should have been dead on a Sunday morning. Ain't got no time. And I said, oh, as I drive the back. What happened? Creed T, you fell over. And I said, my head up high. And it leads my eye. It feels great outside, though. It's not cold. Just a little bit of coolness. A little briskness. The air. Right here at this crossroad is an old 1890s saloon that was used later on in the 2003 remake of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. And the interesting thing is, don't hit, you won't get hit by that car. They serve barbecue. And R. Lee Ermey, who was in the remake, who was also in Full Metal Jacket, it's interesting because he got run down by a vehicle, almost just like you did, right in that spot there from the film. And while I've only seen the movie one time, I do remember that scene where he crossed in front of the truck and the girl ran him down. But you gotta love Full Metal Jacket was the movie which I discovered him in. I am Gunnery Sergeant Hartman, your senior drill instructor. The first and last words out of your filthy sewers will be, sir. Do you maggots understand that? Sure, yes, sir. And they do not take credit cards, cash only here. Population of this town, 92 people. If memory serves me correctly, I think they filmed some scenes inside here as well. The sign is kind of appropriate. Unusual types at the rear tables. He fits right in. Thank you. All right, I got the ribs. Comes with a slice of bread, some onions, a pickle. This looks like some cheese. And what did you get? Oh, with the brisket and sausage. <laughs> Judging by some of the stuff inside on the walls, the movie Secondhand Lions was also filmed in this area. The ambiance here has probably been my favorite so far. Very, like, it's almost like a little divey bar, so pretty cool. Food is good. I'm not, not, not the best I've had so far this week. I was kind of thinking the same thing. If I had to do the one to 10, I would give this place a five when it comes to food. But like you were saying, out of all the places we've been, out of the four spots, as far as the atmosphere and ambiance, this place, huge thumbs up. You go in, the bartenders are drinking beer, and then they go in the back load your plate full of barbecue beef sausage i'm becoming addicted to is something i've not had before so i love the beef sausage here i'm gonna give it a six because of the ambiance and the sausage so five for me on the food one thing about the food i didn't really appreciate was not having the size yeah, i no like size. i like mac and cheese i like mashed potatoes and gravy here they just gave you kind of like pickles and very very hot onions should also add in that there is no menu inside of there and it's all locals we were definitely the outcasts, but very cool experience. It is incredibly foggy, but you can see downtown Austin there on the horizon if you look closely. Hey, Carpetbagger, I know Adam the Woo. I know Adam the Woo, and you are no Adam the Woo. I mean, he's trying to, it just seems to me like the Carpetbagger is trying to be more and more like Adam the Woo, okay? He is. Now he's doing the- You ready to roll? Yeah, 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 I'm ready to roll. We were we're heading into a residential area. There's a house that has a museum inside of it with some really cool stuff. So we called the owners 
and made an appointment. They said, come on by. And this is it. You walk in, the first thing you see are a bunch of My Little Ponies and a fountain inside a tub, a decorative tree with fake flowers and a pony wedged in one of the branches. I'm not really sure what the proper etiquette is. I mean, we're in someone's yard. Their car's parked right here. Do we knock on the door? Do we just go right in? There you go. Thank you. There you Thank go. You. Thanks, children. So this is my Titanic display and it sunk in April 15th, 1912. Last smoke cigarette with the telltale red lipstick. Really? <laughs> that was the last cigarette she ever smoked? Yeah, it was uh, rescued from the trash by a Mr. Atwick who serviced her hotel room. Oh my gosh, Marilyn Monroe's last cigarette. This is a lock of Elvis Presley's hair from Graceland, and now it's here in Texas. This that is a, pheasant. is a pheasant shot by John Wayne. Um, we got this off eBay, and the glue marks act as the signature. Oh. Um, someone selling it said that his uncle used to work on the set with John Wayne. John Wayne would play real life cowboy and I'll go to Canada shoot animals, then have them stuffed and give them away to people on the set. It's incredible that that is right. the last and smoked cigarette from Marilyn Monroe. I had to come take a closer look. That's amazing. So that was at Disneyland, that leaf? It was. Was it on a, one of the attractions or? It's from Chippendale's Ranger Station. Okay. It's made out of plastic. I had kind of fence for it, but it had already fallen off. Should have been prepared like a rabbit or a deer. Forensics tell us that there is a high correlation between whiskey drinking and jackalope sighting. <laughs> hence the jackalope whiskey decanter. Oh, I thought you were going to say hence Dave Collier. That's the flamingo's head. And it was tested, uh, treated, pardon, with uh, mercury about a hundred years ago. Um, so we have it set behind glass. We Slightly safe. disturbing. Is the this is a narwhal tooth <laughs> right here, but which is basically anyway, like a unicorn it and a whale combined. So, First public museum in America opened in 1789, Charles Peale's Museum in Philadelphia, and this is a doorknob from there. Um, in 1893, Chicago Fair, they built the first Ferris wheel, and this was 20 stories tall and could fit over 2,000 people at a time in a single run. This is Walt Disney's Blue Boy mug here. Mm -hmm. With Blue, Blue Boy is this painting at the Huntington Estates near Disneyland. Belong to Walt Disney? Yeah, and so at Disneyland, that's where like the Fiji mermaid that I told you about at Barnum, it really becomes this whole environment, you know, that you walk through. The, there, everything is fake, and you know it's fake, but it's still fascinating and fun. They would encase tarantulas and scorpions. There's a rattlesnake head. This toad and has a zipper on its like stomach. There's a zipper on the stomach of that frog. Egypt, famous places in Egypt that were hand-tinted photos. Niagara Falls, and even like, just kind of these comic domestic scenes, and world's fairs, and such. And it means that you're getting a spike in electromagnetic energy. So, um, ghost hunters use these because they say that ghosts cause elect electromagnetic mm -hmm. warps. And then skeptics who don't believe in ghosts say that when our brains interact with electromagnetic fields, it can make part of your brain feel like there's somebody watching you, basically. The story is that there was this couple in Ohio, they moved into a really old farmhouse, and they, the woman started having dreams of like a child in the basement, and they were doing some work down there and knocked out a wall, and they found this hidden room with a bed, a little bed, and this doll was on the bed. Does she have a name? No, we don't. So you got Robert the doll, but this, yeah, one, this one doesn't have a name. Robert, no. You gonna show me the way? You show me the way around into the backyard? Lots of flamingos. There's some baby heads over here on sticks. Oh, some chickens? Hello there. Here's another kitty cat. 
and they have a greenhouse of sorts set up as well inside here they are growing cactuses and all different types of other plant life i think some of my favorite types of museums are inside houses that you do not know exist if you drive by you don't even realize they're there if it wasn't for the beauty of the internet i would have never known about that place it's amazing pretty amazing one room full of a lot of really cool stuff very the thing that really blew my mind was the elvis hair the Marilyn Monroe last cigarette she ever smoked before she died and a cup that Walt Disney used to own. It's been a good day out seeing some stuff. Certainly more proactive than those guys. Three couch potatoes. Are three couch potatoes better than one? Probably not. Vlog?